Here with the wall of frame choices, uh, I'm a little bit uh, perplexed. H how in the world would someone pick? There's different complex ornate styles. There's simple, there's colors, there's stains. Uh, how, how do you decide what goes into the actual frame? I can, it's, 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 it, I can tell you what it is. It, 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 it is that perplexing even for an expert. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is a family business. You both have the names, maiden names of Richter. Tell me how this all got started here. This has been, what, 70 years or so? Um, approximately. Yeah. So now we've added Maria here in the framing area. Now, Maria, this is a family business. We've talked about that before. Yes. About 70 years. How did these young ladies come involved and, and get part of the framing business? When did that happen? Uh, I Ellen, started it. Yeah. I started junior year, yes, yeah. when Ellen was in high school. Helen didn't start until after her children were born, right? And you, I guess you guys raised kids in this room, right? Right. We sure <laughs> did. What do we have happening here? This is where the computer, I get it ready to cut the mat. Cut the mat, okay. Mm hmm You put in your sizes. All right, so once you push the button, this seems like magic. It just goes on its own, right? And the lines in his cutting is very sharp. There's no raggedness to it. None. It's as it should be. And out it comes. Perfect mat. How about that? You just kind of listen to what your customer tells you, and um, some like gold, some don't like gold, some wants a rustic wood, some wants ornate, you just... Just whatever. Just and whatever I would think that, that because your store sells paint, carpeting, all kinds of home decor, uh, for a lot of people it's probably important that this matches yes. either what they're going to put in elsewhere in the house or what they already have, right? Mm -hmm. Did they turn out okay, or were they scarred by this experience? <laughs> they're pretty normal kids. Good. Now you've got a picture here that's... It shows the beginning of everything. Tell me what's happening here. These are the brothers and some of the guys that came back from the war with them that was friends. And they built the first building up on 2nd Avenue. And they did all the work themselves. Of course, gotcha. you know, that was good. I would pose as the average art framing customer. You can see I've got a piece here. Uh, can you guys tell me how this works? I, I'm the average dumb guy with this, really it's kind of a print. Yes. And I'm thinking to myself, uh, I'll just go get a metal frame and stick this in it. No, it won't look very pretty. Okay, <laughs> well, what's wrong with that idea? <laughs> well, you bring it in. We start by asking questions, Ellie. <laughs> um, what are your colors in the room you want to put this thing in? Uh, the color of the, uh, on my walls is similar to what you see here. It's kind good, of an off-white. It's not a, quite as yellow. Okay, a good neutral. So yes. we, we're not going to fight anything that we decide to put on it from right. there. So any other colors in the room as far as furniture? Uh, not furniture, but the trim is a little unique. Tell me some framing stories. The good and the bad. Well, I guess the one that sticks the most in my mind was when uh, I had a customer come in and brought in a burial doll from the digs of Peru. My concern was, what did the child die from that this doll came out of the tomb? <laughs> so you're concerned you have like a TV doll from Peru. There you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or worse. But you did it, didn't you? I sure did. It's amazing. Did you put gloves on? I did wear gloves, yes, yes. Really weird, strange blood red. Now, since I'm, I'm down here at Richter's, I'm going to be taking that one on the end that says sunflower. So it's going to be a bright yellow trim on the door frames and so forth. Okay. So cool. that's going to be our color away from our picture. It won't be right well, up against right. it. Right. So what we'll have is, is off-white here, and then framing in the room will be this color. Okay. My suggestion to make this picture stand out is because you have a lot of dark in the background, is to keep it dark. Okay. Black is all, always good with a cream. It's a good neutral. It doesn't fight your trim color. Okay. So because this is a signed print, I would choose one of these blacks. This is a normal pebbled black. That's almost kind of muted. It is. On the borderline of being right. This one is That looks a, like velvet. That's very rich. It's, it looks it. It's not velvet, but this one is. 
I noticed this thing about glass choices. Glass really matters, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Tell us how glass and, and frames and pictures, what that's all about. <laughs> You're going to cut this, right? Yes. You're going to get my face out of there, right? Yes. So, <laughs> so, so this sounds kind of spooky. You've got museum glass and conservation clear. Well, what is this about? Well, the conservation glass cuts out... 99% uh, of the ultraviolet rays to keep your pictures or diplomas or your child's artwork all from fading. So it'll be good from the time they're little till the time they're old. That sounds very expensive. Uh, the museum is more, but you know, it's worth it if you uh, can see the painting in 25 years or if it's I faded see. to nothing. Okay. So well, I'm not really a velvet person, but I, I think I want to go with the velvet because this lady looks like she's sitting on a velvet couch to me. Now, with your wall being the cream, you could do a really neutral frame like this. Um, not going to show up as well because it's going to be cream here also. Oh, yeah. There's a lot that goes into this. I had no idea that I have to make these sorts of decisions. But I'm glad we are. There's it, a black. It, it, it just extends your colors out. you got a little peep of gold in there, mm -hmm. and it's not a solid black frame. So it's got a little brown in there, too. All of that doesn't fight your cream, and it doesn't fight your marigold. Yes. Now, I assume people bring in posters and ancient antiquities in the way of art, but you guys have taken this to an area that I didn't know existed, which is stuff like this. I mean, it's three-dimensional framing. Tell, tell me about that. Uh, the shadow boxing is to keep all your keepsakes. Uh, what good is it if you can't enjoy it is what I think. And so we, it's been done for years, but we kind of tapped in on it and have added to. And I mean, there's some stuff out in this world that is unbelievable. Well, this is good advice, but I'm going to ask another question here. As you may have figured out, me and my wife are into yellow right now. <laughs> and I had this vision of just a basic yellow frame like you'd get at some kind of uh, hobbyist store or whatever. But now that I look at that, along with the paint swab, it looks kind of cheap. I don't want to do that. It does. And the second thing, you want your artwork to show up also. Mm -hmm. So when you see this on the wall, what you're automatically going to see first is yeah. the frame. I'm seeing the frame. I'm not seeing this. this you want to see your all. artwork. Mm -hmm. So. Makes sense. There's a lot to think about here. I, if it were me, yeah. I would probably would I would probably venture into, since you want a little bit of the gold, this kind of mm -hmm. gives you the same family of color without it being that. And it And then it makes it look very out. rich. It looks like it's almost a museum piece with that frame. Pulls her out. It definitely does. Uh, I collect presidential memorabilia. This is, I have one for every president. This is just some of the campaign pins for the presidents, and I have a hallway full of them. Some and of that's this, not cheap, is it? Uh, no. They're valuable, I would think. At this but point. there's only a limited supply. Yeah. When they're gone, they're gone. And this I, is where I'm putting in my inheritance for my kids. Now, what are these? These are our glass now. Oh, we get to choose the glass now. You're kidding me. I get to see what it looks like before you do it. Yes. That's your conservation clear. Okay. This provides 97% 97 of the UV rays, so your print doesn't fade. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's a clear. It also comes in reflection control which if you have a lot of light we have a lot of light this would be a better glass and, and what is the difference well, I mean has it it doesn't have as much glare so it speak? doesn't you can see them side by side you see the shininess in and yes, this I one do. and this one doesn't have it. I think that may be the way to go there are other options a little more expensive this is called a museum glass I like that name uh, it's more designed for true original art or very expensive prints. Well, well you, this this print, print is very expensive. I got it at a garage sale. <laughs> Those could be really expensive ones. Gotcha. Uh, this cuts down on more of the UV rays and it doesn't give you the glare. So it's not a glaring thing either. I think I'm going to go with museum glass mainly because I like the name of it. 
and I'm sure it costs a little extra, but it's worth it to me. It is. It and, is. and it kind of goes with this, this nice frame. It's okay. really good on, um, like I say, those plus uh, wedding pictures, graduation pictures, those kind of things. And if you do graduation pictures, let me say this. If you have more than one child, it's a good idea to have more than one, one for each child if you want them to match. Say that again, the you lost me there. If you have three children okay. and your first one graduates, it is best to have three frames made at that time so that everything matches if you want all to be the same. It's like tombstones for your family. Exactly. Well, I have a question. I, I, I always thought that you just put posters and nice, nice paintings or photographs in that. And I've got drawers full of stuff like this. And like this, I don't have it exactly like this. But it's just a bunch of trinkets that are just, just basically rotting in my drawer that I would like to enjoy or show people. This is how it's done, isn't it? Yes. Micro mosaic pens. Another thing Tell I like. Tell me about this. I never heard of a micro mosaic pen. What is uh, that? A lot of them are made in Italy. Um, uh, just the detail in this is magnificent. Uh, this is just a way when you collect something to be able to enjoy it. Makes sense. Put it on your wall. You can look at it every day instead of it being a box or in a drawer. And this is just a wonderful way to just be able to enjoy it every day. And, and I have to believe that something like this wouldn't be particularly expensive for, for the framing project. Not, and the no. frame itself. I mean, it'd be worth, so it could be worth it. It for would. What, the benefit you're getting from it. Uh, I've also done um, pocket watches collections of pocket watches.